Hey, what's going on guys? So in this video, we're going to take a look at a new JavaScript layout engine called Murray. And as you can see here, this is the website. Uh, it's haltu, H-A-L-T-U dot github dot I-O slash Murray. And it's, it's basically allows us to create responsive, sortable, filterable, and draggable grid layouts. So there's a very nice example down here, and it kind of looks like a CSS grid layout, but we can take things and we can move them around and you'll see that it automatically sorts. You can make it so that you can get rid of things in the grid. You can sort by um, form fields. So if we want just the red boxes, just the blue, we can sort by title and color. We can change the layout here. So there's a, a ton that you can do with this layout engine. Now, if we go down here, you'll see that there's some other examples. For instance, if you wanted a to do list and you wanted to be able to prioritize your to do's, you can restrict the movement as well. So if you wanted just horizontal uh, dragging or just uh, vertical or no dragging at all, just a simple grid system, you can also do that. Now, there are some dependencies. It does need Hammer.js, which is used for drag and drop support, and then Web Animations, which is used for the, the fast animations. So we will be needing those. Uh, we're just going to use a CDN. We're going to keep things simple. Uh, we're not going to use NPM or anything, although you can. So what we're going to build is not nearly as extensive as this here, but we're just going to kind of get started with it and we're going to build a grid and we can sort things. OK, so we can go ahead and move things around and it automatically sorts. Now, I use two examples, one with just words and, and, you know, just text and a background color and then also some images. And notice that when we when we click and hold the color changes and then when we release it's a different color so you can you can uh, customize this stuff within the CSS all right so that's what we'll be building and it's completely responsive so if I go ahead and I make my browser smaller you'll see it automatically sorts uh, it automatically changes so that's what we'll be building guys hopefully you enjoy this this is the last video before the holidays so uh, i wanted to do something but something that's not too you know too in depth um, so let's go ahead and get started hey guys if you've been watching my videos for a while and you really like what i do and i've helped you out a lot consider becoming a patron even for one dollar per month it pushes me to keep bringing you guys the best content i possibly can there's reward tiers for discounts free udemy courses personal support and more so check out the patreon link in the description below for more info all right guys so we're gonna get started here i just have vs code open and i have an empty folder called murray grid with an index html file and a, a style.css file so if you're following along just go ahead and create those two files that's all i've done okay there's nothing in them so this is the github page for murray and it kind of guides us on what we need to do so we need to we need to include the Murray script and we can do that with a CDN or we can use NPM or Bower, which I wouldn't suggest using Bower for anything anymore. Um, but we're just going to keep it simple and use a CDN. So we're going to grab the minified version here. Let's go ahead and just put some basic HTML body in here. So head body tags uh, I'm using Emmet. So I'm able to do exclamation tab. If you're using VS Code, you have Emmet installed by default. If you're using something like Atom or Sublime Text, you can install it as a plugin. All right. So I'm just going to close that up. And for the title here, let's say Murray Grid. And we're going to put that script tag that we just copied down here. Now, as I said, it does have two dependencies, web animations and Hammer.js. Web animations obviously handles the animations. Hammer.js handles the drag events. So right here, they show you an example, but they don't give you the CDN link for um, the dependencies. So we have to get those ourselves. So let's search for web dash animations CDN. We're going to get it from cdnjs.com and just copy this one here, the minified version. I'm going to say copy script tag and we're going to put that right here. And then hammer.js is going to go in the middle. So let's search for hammer.js CDN. We'll get that from cdnjs.com as well. We want the minified version, copy the script tag and put it right there. All right, so now we have the external scripts that we need. Let's also create our own script tag. Now, when there's actually going to be 
just a couple lines of JavaScript. All we really need to do is initialize it and then pass in any options that you want. Um, so what we're going to do now is add the markup. And as you can see from the example, there's just a div with uh, a div with the class of grid. And then each item inside the grid has a class of item and then an inner div of item content. A class of item content. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and put in a class of grid. And I'm using Emmet for my abbreviations. Let's do a class of item, a class of item dash content. Okay. And then what we're going to do is just we're going to create a bunch of these. So uh, let's see. Oops. Just copy this. So let's do actually let's put some text in here first. We'll say one and then we're going to take the item and we're going to paste in that's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then I'm just going to format this. So now what we'll do is just change the text real quick. So let's say two, three, four. I know this is a little tedious, but I really don't like to, um, you know, copy and paste everything. So five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. All right. So let's save this. Now I'm using a, a plugin or an extension for VS Code called Live Server. Did I just say VS Code? his code called live server. If you want that, just go ahead and click extension, the icon extension here and search for live server and install it. All right. And you don't need that. You can just open up the, the HTML file or use something else. But if you have live server, you can just right click and say open with live server. And that's going to open over here in the browser. So nothing special. Uh, what we want to do now is add our CSS. So we need to make sure that we link that style CSS file. So I'm going to go to the head and just put in a link tag. We'll link to style.css and save. And then let's open up that CSS file. And let's go ahead and add body. And I'm just going to add a font family of Arial, Arial Helvetica Sans Serif. And let's add a background. The background color I'm using is just a very light gray. So it's going to be FCF, uh, FCF A, F9, which is pretty close to white. Uh, but let's save that. Now you can see the font changed. So for the CSS, if we look at the GitHub page, they have an example. Now we're not going to use this exact CSS, but we do want to use some of it. So or most of it, actually, the grid we want to position relative. So let's go ahead and do that uh, position relative. And then for the item, we're going to display that um, as a block. Let's do position absolute. I'm going to do a height of 200 pixels and a width of 200 pixels and then also a line height. Oops, not a line break, but a line height of 200 pixels. And then let's do a margin of five pixels. All right, let's also text align to the center. So that should be good for the item. Uh, actually, let's put a Z index in here as well. So if you're not too familiar with CSS, Z index, basically the higher the number, the closer to you it's going to be, the closer to the front. Um, so one would be closer to the front than zero, two would be closer than one and so on. Um, so if we look over here, we have different classes for different states. So the dragging state when you're actually, you know, holding down and you're dragging it, we want the Z index to be closer to us because we don't want it to be behind the other ones. So we want a higher Z index. When we release, we want less than dragging, but higher than the rest. When it's hidden, we want a Z index of zero. So we actually do want um, all of these. So I'm just going to grab these. 
All right, and it's just I like to put line breaks under those. And then for the item content, let's say item content, we're going to um, position this relative. Let's say position relative, and we're going to set a width of 100% and also a height of 100%. And let's do, uh, we want the cursor to be a pointer, okay? Because when we hover over it, we want that pointer. It's not gonna happen by default. So let's say cursor pointer. And let's say we want the color of the text to be white. And let's set the background. Okay, the background is gonna have a hexadecimal color of 596. It's gonna be 596.87D like that, which is a blue, well, kind of a grayish bluish color. Uh, we're gonna set the font size to 40 pixels. And let's set, uh, we wanna center this as well. So we'll say text align center. And let's save that. Okay, so this is what we see so far and that's, that's fine. We haven't actually initialized uh, Murray yet. So another thing I want to do is just change the color for when we're we're dragging it uh, and then also when we're releasing it. So we want these two here, but we don't want to change the actual style of this class. We want the item content inside of these classes. So I'm going to copy those two and go down here and just add dot item whoops item dash content. And same thing here. So dot item content. And then I'm going to change the background. So for dragging, uh, let's see, for dragging, we're going to do 899-3A2, which is uh, kind of a lighter color than the default. And then for the releasing, we're going to do a background. And that hexadecimal is going to be 152 C43, which is a darker blue. All right, and that's it for our CSS. So we'll save that. Now we're going to go back to our index.html, go down to our script tag, and let's see, we're going to take a look at the GitHub. And basically, all we have to do is initialize the Murray constructor. So we'll set a variable here. So I'm going to use const and say grid and set that to new. Murray, and then we want to pass in whatever the wrapper for the grid. In our case, it's the class of grid. Okay, so you don't have to use class grid. You can just whatever you use, you put in here. So let's save that and go back. And there we go. Now, by default, I cannot drag. Okay, the, the default value is just a regular grid. If I resize the browser, it does go ahead and sort. Okay, so it is responsive. Um, but if we go to the documentation, these are all the different options that you have. So the one that we're really interested in is drag enabled, which by default is false. So to add an option, what you need to do is just add a second parameter of an object and then you can put whatever options you want. So we want drag enabled to be true. And we'll go ahead and save that. And now we, sh we now we can move things around. So it's as easy as that. What's that? Three lines of JavaScript. Okay, so just just a, a constructor with uh, a single option and we have a sortable grid. So I think that's that's pretty cool. Uh, some of these other things. I don't I don't know what all of these are. You guys can look into this if you want. Uh, if you want to restrict, let's say to horizontal uh, dragging you could do drag axis so let's try drag axis and uh, I think we can just do like X I think it's X and Y yeah so now if I try to scroll if I try to drag down I can't I can only go this way and if I were to choose Y 
then I can't go over, I can only go up and down. So you can imagine the things you can do with this. You could create games like matching games, things like that. Um, you can hide things behind them. So this could be used for a, a lot of different things. Uh, just an image gallery, a nice interactive image gallery. Maybe a to-do list where you can change your, your priority priorities. So uh, it can be pretty cool. So uh, let's see, what I wanna do now I mean that's pretty much the the introduction to this what I want to do now is just add some more items but I want to use images so I'm going to copy everything within the grid class not the grid class itself but all the items so down to here and then we'll just copy and we'll go ahead and paste that in and then I'm gonna replace Let's format this real quick. I'm going to replace the one with an image tag and the source is going to be uh, lorem pixel uh, lorem pixel.com and let's do what's the format of these images. So it's going to be the the dimension so 200 by 200 and then we want nature. So we can put a category and then slash one. So let's see, we'll go ahead and copy that image tag. We don't need an alt. So we'll copy that and we're just gonna paste these in here. So this one will be nature slash two. This will be slash three, four, at six, seven, eight, nine was was giving me a problem for some reason the image nine wasn't rendering so um, I'm just gonna take off this last one and make this one ten alright so let's try that we'll save and it might take a second for the images to come in because they're coming from Lorem pixel normally these would be images that you would provide uh, you know, locally. Wow, that's slow. All right, so what I'm going to do now is just uh, resize the browser like that, and now we can move things around. Should be able to. Yep. Okay, so it's responsive. You'll see if I make this smaller. Now, I did use a fixed. Um, width for the boxes so it's not going to reach all the way over you can change that if you want my goal was basically just to show you how to how to kind of initialize this this um, what is this layout engine all right so I'm not going to really go any further than this I just wanted to do a quick video on it or you know kind of quick and um, introduce you to it and you may want to look into things like having a form where you can sort by certain things um, you can you can actually make it so you can delete them you can look at all the options that that are included so just a basic introduction video so hopefully you guys like this and maybe you'll look into this um, I like to, to research new technologies this was actually brought to me by a friend that does some research for me and um, you know to lets me know new things that that people may be interested in so um, I, I like it it interests me so I figured you guys would too so that's it guys thank you for watching and I want to wish you all a Merry Christmas or happy holidays whatever whatever holiday you celebrate and that's it thanks for watching guys and I will see you probably after the new year but maybe one video before that all right see you later